If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again and welcome to episode number 168 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with a home game against Newcastle United. Now we recently played them in the Chelsea career, no, my player, and uh, they were towards the top of the table where we were at Arsenal trying to catch them up. Here, we're slightly ahead of them and they're trying to catch us up in this series. We're currently top of the table in the Barclays Premier League. Newcastle flying high up in third, though they appear to be a very good side in, uh, in FIFA, so who knows what's been happening to them in real life over the past few seasons or so, but they're uh, going to present themselves a, uh, as a tough uh, side to break down with uh, obviously uh, Yanga and Bira at the back, Lascelles, Davide Santon, Daryl Yanma, obviously very strong uh, back four and then they've got Vernon Anita who's a very defensive minded midfielder and I don't really know too much about what well, anything about uh, Almeida Costa Lopez so um, perhaps you guys could let me know what sort of player he is in the comment section down below, I've not really encountered him before in career mode or in real life so uh, he's an unknown to me, but they've got Batshuayi up top, who oh, he's obviously a very good striker as well. So they've got, uh, you know, quality throughout the side. Remy Caballar gets it into Vernon and Anita here, and they're actually going to take themselves a 1-0 lead. I say Vernon Anita's a uh, heavily defence-minded player, but he finds himself six yards from goal, takes it around the keeper and gives them the lead early on. So that's put me on the back foot, and I was a little bit, I don't really know what's going to happen in this one then, to be completely honest. Obviously, over the past few episodes, we've been scoring a lot of goals, but we've also been conceding a lot of goals. My defending on FIFA is is not very good. You guys know this. You're fully, fully adjusted to the fact that I can't defend on this game. And uh, unfortunately, we did score there to bring it back to 1-1. One, uh, one, one, but the, goal, uh, the referee decided to bring it back for a free kick. So I was livid. And even more so after uh, the free kick was well saved from Tim Krull after the header down by a Paulson again, I think, underneath it. Scored the initial header and the referee disallowed it and then had the other header that was pretty tame down at the goalkeeper. Tim Krull, though, I don't know how he's reacted so quickly to that second shot to be able to stop me from getting myself back on level terms. He's ridiculous. There on the rebound, hit it as hard as I could and he just kind of took one step to his side, caught the ball and was like, yep. Yeah, Cool. I'll stop that from going in. I was like, cheers. Thanks, Tim. So uh, we push forward into the second half, still trying to find ourselves an equaliser. We're having so many chances in this game. Tim Krul again with another save. That one wasn't quite as well placed as the previous couple have been by uh, Yusuf Paulson. And uh, it was a simple save for uh, for Timmy. Just to step one step to his left this time and pluck it out the air. Brilliant turn by Paulson here, though. And the reactions from Tim Krul. He's just absolutely incredible. He's done it for us a couple of times on stream in the Tottenham career mode. And the way he just reacts there to bring his right arm up. I thought initially it just hit him on the shoulder but it wasn't. He almost leant out of the way and brought his hand up to get it clear. He's still dropping free in the box. I just can't get it into the back of the net. Please Mr. Crawl, let me score. I want a point at least from this game. We don't want to lose ground to uh, the teams behind us. We don't want them closing up because uh, obviously we want to finish in the top four this season. At the very least we whip the ball in. Keeper comes, doesn't get there. We win the header but it goes wide and out for a corner which unfortunately nothing came from. There's barely any time left in the game now. Working it into Johannes Geist gets a great turn in and the shot, but Tim Cross there again to make a great save and then the defender scrambles it clear. We're still pushing forward. Less than five minutes to go though. Strong Georgiev down the line to Timo Werner. Just keeps it in, then turns his side quite easily on the defender. It's tackled by the second, but it drops to uh, Wendell. So he's going to whip the cross in. Up goes the defender, or the uh, midfield. No, it was Josef Poulsen, the striker. But unfortunately, we weren't able to get ourselves a goal there either. Another tame header. Then Yusuf Paulsen has another effort. Does really well here. His feet are so good to get in the box. But a last minute diving tackle from Yanga and Biwa means that they are able to keep us out for the entirety of the game. We had 18 shots in that game. 14 of which were on target. No goals. Just no goals. And then we get the following blow that our number one left back is going to be out for three months with a broken ankle. So that isn't necessarily going to help things either, is it? So we head into the second game of the episode, away from home against West Ham, hoping for better fortunes. Obviously, uh, Newcastle will now have closed the gap to us. And uh, they, I don't know whether they jumped up to second in between uh, that game and this one, or uh, whether Chelsea is still sit there in second. I'm not really too sure what Chelsea's uh, result was in their uh, previous match day, but uh, an 
an almost unrecognisable side for West Ham here. You've still got Winston Reid, you've still got Mark Noble in there, but some very, very new players, or very different players that you would expect from a stereotypical West Ham United starting level. Although I guess in real life this season, they're going all out and they've bought five or six new players anyway. So maybe it is realistic that there are so many new players in a West Ham side. But we're going to take the corner here in the opening five minutes. Johannes Geis whips it in. Up goes John Stones. Defender tries his best on the line, but can't keep it out. We do get a goal immediately at the beginning of, at the beginning of this game. And I've <laughs> left myself uh, just kind of ruining the chances that we in, missed in the previous one. I was like, why couldn't that have happened in the Newcastle game? Then we wouldn't have lost. But pleased to take the lead so early on here against West Ham meant that I felt more comfortable with uh, the fact that, you know, we'd only conceded one against Newcastle and we've conceded three or four in previous games, especially in Europe. So I was hoping that we'd be able to keep a clean sheet this time around. And fortunately, Marcus Hutchinson was uh, on board with that idea as well, with a great save diving up to his right-hand side just a few moments after we'd scored. Then our right-back, Marco Polenz, plays it into Paulson. Nice little back heel to Georgiev. Paulson again breaks Breaks in behind here. His dribbling is so good, so precise. But a wonderful reaction save from Spiegel keeps it out, and the defender was going to win the rebounding header. So unfortunately, we weren't able to make it too. But Marco Polenz goes on the overlap again here. Our German right back goes on a really nice run, actually. Apparently, he's unhappy at the club right now, but he goes on a brilliant run, and he's actually going to finish the move off with a really nice shot into the top left corner as well. So I can't see any reason why he'd want to leave. We're top of the table. He's starting more often than not. And now he's adding goals to his game as well. So hopefully that will help improve his morale. But we lost our first team left back to injury for three months in the last game. And now our other left back, our only other left back, Wendell, goes down injured in the first half in this game and we're going to have to take him off as well and we'll find out at the end of the episode or at the end of the game what's happened to him but a really awkward fall just got completely wiped out by I think it was Kiyate I'm not entirely too sure but uh, really unfortunate that he's going to be injured as well so we're going to have troubles when it comes to the, our defensive uh, side of things not the best of turns inside from Strail George Eve. he's definitely done better in his time here at Cambridge but Polenz with a lovely little back hill to Adarabioyo Paulson gets it into George Eve again then he's going to return the favour and Paulson just uses his pace to get around the keeper. Slots it into the back of an empty net to make it 3-0 in the 72nd minute. We were able to keep the clean sheet and get all three points with a three-goal victory. Pleased to uh, bounce back from that defeat against Newcastle. Really pleased. Although, at what cost? We lost Buraki for three months. We've lost Wendell for four weeks. So I'm really going to have to shuffle my defensive pack to make sure that we have enough players to be able to play all of the games we're going to have in the upcoming month leading up to the January transfer window. So it's going to be a little bit interesting. There are a few players here that are slightly unhappy because they feel underpaid. So I'm going to have to uh, address that, I believe, between now and the end of uh, this particular half season because obviously so I don't want to lose them in January. A few players are growing though. Marco Polenz is homesick but hopefully, like I say, his current form can help improve that. Johannes Geis feels threatened but he's my number, he's, well he and Julian von Hart, because you can see he's now up to 88 rated. They're definitely my number one, uh, uh, you know number, there's two of them so they're both kind of my number one name on the team sheet when it comes to the CDM roles so, you know, their first team presence isn't threatened at all. I don't, I don't know why Johannes guys feels so, in uh, such a way. Obviously Gabby Dini's unhappy because he's not playing football but I wanted to sell him and nobody bid for him so there's not really too much I could do about that but Sadio Mane is now 79 rated and a few other players are starting to grow as well. A few of the youngsters that haven't necessarily played yet and uh, obviously Sebastian Brau would like him to improve a little bit more as well as Sebastian Avevo if possible. Uh, Avaro Vidios still out injured, Cristiano Biraghi is still out injured and uh, Vendo is still out injured as well. James Gillett out on loan has gone up three as well though which is pleasing. Nice to see some growth all throughout the squad in the defence, in the midfield and up top as well. We'll have another game in the uh, Europa League in tomorrow, no not tomorrow, you'll be seeing this on Monday, in Wednesday's episode. Obviously earlier on tonight or earlier on this evening there will be another episode in the Youth Squad Challenge so check the channel page for that if you missed it. Of course feel free to check anything on the channel page you might have missed over the past few days as well and uh, of course drop the video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already with three points clear at the top of the table. Newcastle beat us and then lost their 14th game so the gap is actually despite the fact that uh, they beat us extended itself to uh, to five points now. So well done, Newcastle, GG. But we're still three points oh, ahead of uh, Chelsea. So pleased with the way things are going so far. And we'll try and continue that in the next episode. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.